But these cultures, the Native Americans, the African Americans, um, have been oppressed by white race, white the the white race for eons. And um, sorry, my my little indicator just did some creepy stuff here, so I don't know if I'm still connected or not. But I'm going to keep talking. My wife loves it when I do that, I'll tell you. But, you know, we, we identify. Um, there are these wannabes, and they're called wannabes, especially when you're dealing in the realm of Native Americans. Honestly, I get it, man. I get it. Everybody white is connected to some Native, you know, belief or some Native tradition. You know, there's blood. Most often Cherokee. You know, I'm no blood expert. I'm only an expert on my own blood, but... You know, it's, if you don't want to be considered a wannabe, as far as Native Americans go, there are certain things you do and don't do. Wow, I'm really jumping around from topic to topic. Now I'm starting to get what Tina's talking about. I'm starting to get it now. But anyway, let me focus. Let me digress. Okay, man. So here I am trying to focus my psychic energy on what my topic's supposed to be about. Okay. Shootings of unarmed African Americans. We'll, we'll touch all that other stuff later. Maybe. But in this particular incident, in this particular shooting, here's a man, and we've all seen this from, you know, that helicopter footage, that infamous helicopter footage, um, the cops are on their way to a d domestic violence call. And as a cop or an EMT or anything, when you get an emergency call, you, you are 100%. Your adrenaline is pumping through you, you know, like cocaine to, to you know, to a user of cocaine. Since I've never done it, I don't know, but sounds like I really need it, right? <laughs> yeah, I really need uh, some adrenaline, sure. But the, so here they are. They're on their way to this this domestic violence call, and so they come across this disabled vehicle in the, in the, in the road. And here's a guy. You know, it's his vehicle. He has his hands up. He's walking back to the truck. Yeah, I mean, you know, there are some common sense things. If a cop tells you to do something, just do it. Especially in these days, they're gonna kill you. White, black, it doesn't matter what you are. I'm sorry, but but the, the it just looks like too many cops are. Trigger happy. Absolutely trigger happy. So so there's this guy, and he's heading back to his truck. Now, you know what, what bothers me, what bothers me, and, and I know this is this is the case for, for many, many states here in the United States, but today I decided to look it up uh, because I saw someone make a similar comment about California. So I looked up today the minimum amount of training one has to endure to become a police officer here in the state of Kentucky. Uh, what I discovered, in fact, there was a position open for the Louisville Police Department, and it said uh, a thousand hours of training. And um, so, of course, you take a thousand hours and you break it down, and that comes down to being 41 days. Basically, a month and a week of training. Now, when you go through this, now, now I'm, you know, it's not, of course, it's not 24-7 consecutive, but, you know. So, let's just say 41 days of training to become a police officer. This can um, get a gun and a car, and you can go out and enforce the law to be a cosmetologist, to be a licensed cosmetologist. In the state of Kentucky, 1,800 hours or 75 days. So over two months of training to become a cosmetologist, but just over a month to be a cop. Now granted, like I said, oh, you got to pass some, some psych, psyche valves. You absolutely do. But what good are these psyche valves when you're seeing all these people, the entire country over, just murdering unarmed people. What good does this do? I'm going to only keep this, tonight's little rant down to about half an hour. 
Um, at the moment, I see that no one's even listening, but uh, hey, it's there to listen to later. Anyway, it's just a little bit annoying. It's just a little bit annoying that when I'm watching the video, and in the posts I made about, hey, here's a guy who was following commands. You had one cop with a taser pointed at, at, at Terrence Crutcher. 40, 40 years old. This man's 40-year-old. Father of four, I think. I mean, yeah, I'm not, I didn't check all my facts on, on his, his familial relations. But he was definitely a father. So here he is. You know, and he's walking back to his vehicle. We don't know what he's saying. All we hear is the banter over the radio. So you got one guy with the taser. And they're giving him commands. And they said, you know, and then and then you have this, this idiot. This absolute fucking idiot. And I'm going to apologize because I don't normally use language. But some, but you just get driven. You just get driveling, driven. And when, it, when I make this post public... You know, I'm going to make sure I re-click the explicit language part. But this, this lady is a fucking idiot. And her name, <laughs> her, her name, Betty Shelby. Betty Shelby. She's got her gun drawn on Terrence Crutcher. The cop next to her has a taser. Well, you know, the, the, the cop with the taser is giving commands. She's on the radio saying, you know... He's not following commands. What commands other than put your hands up? Okay, maybe he didn't lay down. You know? But but I got to tell you. I mean, there there's footage. Go look up on YouTube. Go look. You will see that these cops almost purposefully. You'll have ten cops pulling somebody over. And three different cops giving different commands. And it's, it's turn around, you know, face me, turn around, I said turn around, he's being uncooperative, here comes the taser, here comes the slamming the head down, you know, I mean, these cops, I'm sorry, I, one of my best friends is a cop here in Georgetown, been known the guy since kindergarten, great, great friend of mine, he's not an idiot, but so many of these others are, so many, so anyway, this guy's walking back to his truck in the video. They said he was reaching into the vehicle. So, which, hey, I understand. If, you know, you reach back into the vehicle, you could be going for a weapon or anything. And these days, with domestic terrorism at, at, at an all-time high, you know, I'm just saying that because that's what the media says, even though domestic terrorism has been going on way before ISIS, way before Al-Qaeda. So anyway... They say he's reaching into the vehicle. So this girl, she freaks out, and she fires her weapon. She, of course, she kills the guy. Now, in an interview, in 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 a in a statement, um, she actually stated, well, "Let me go back because I'm um, batters on on the window, which proved the window was not down." So a cop, standing however many feet she was from behind that vehicle. Is focused on him, kills him because she thinks he's reaching back in the vehicle. Now, let's go back. Let's go back to, like I said, here in Kentucky, that thousand hours of training. Because that thousand fucking hours of training must be some of the most awesome training in the world. And I'm not bashing cops here. I'm not. I'm not bashing cops at all. But I, what I am saying, what is, what is fucking stupid is that this guy is flying around in a helicopter. And he's looking down on the scene, as they always do. They they narrate the scene, you know, the, relaying what's going on. And, and I want to, um, here we go. It says, the affidavit in which she filled out says, she told the uh, police homicide investigators, quote, she was in fear for her life and thought Mr. Crutcher was going to kill her. When she began, um... Following Mr. Crutcher to the vehicle with her duty weapon drawn, she was yelling for him to stop and get on his knees. Um, and obviously he didn't do that, obvious, but she was in fear for her life. Um, she also stated Crutcher was wearing baggy clothes. But Shelby, quote, was not able to see any weapons or bulges indicating a weapon was present. 
the affidavit continues. But again, back to that. So this thousand hours of training, you would have thought that one of the most things, one of the most important weapons a cop has is observation. It is sight, sound, listening, you know, acknowledging the tiny things, the little details. There is nothing. You, you very rarely ever hear of a cop saying, oh, I've dealt with this kind of crap before. Most of them have. I mean, granted, she wasn't on the force that long, but that's that's that doesn't even matter. This training, this most killer fucking awesome training that you can have as a cop. She didn't notice that the window, the driver's side window was up. She didn't notice that. So here's a guy, again, let's go back. The, the guy's flying around the helicopter, and he's narrating the scene. And he's looking down, and um, it's... um. His name, actually. Um, let's see. Does this article, and I hate, I really hate using mainstream media um, because it is so poisoned. It, it, it is, it's just absolutely so poisoned. Um, but this cop who's flying around, and, and I'm sorry, I don't mean to laugh. None of this, none of this is funny at all. It's just the idiocy of the cops. No mean. An immediate indication of being on drugs. How fucking retarded has the police community become that a man with his hands up walking back to his vehicle must obviously be on drugs? You know why he thinks he's on drugs? Because he thinks, just like all the other cops think, you are a fucking idiot if you disobey any one command from a police officer. And that warrants death. But you know, we just had that um, we just had that guy do that shooting over there at the, oh yeah, which one? I know, right? I know which one. But um, all right, how about what's his face there? You know, he he just killed five um, five people at a makeup counter. Now, granted, believe you got trust me. I I do much more research. But this is a rant, you know, um. So I don't know his name. All I know is that, you know, he went and killed some people. And he fought with cops, but he's in custody. He, he, he's, not, he's not black. But you had, you had uh, old boy over there, you know, murdering people in the movie theater. You know, the one who uh, does a really good uh, Joker look, you know. Hell, he killed those people. Did some shit, fought with cops. He's not dead. But out of the whole thing, the thing that really got under my skin is this guy in this helicopter saying he looks like a really bad dude. What the fuck made him look like a bad dude? Because he was black. That's it. Probably on something. Because he wasn't getting on the ground. I, I'm sorry. But you know, people don't realize. And, and, I, and I'm watching the brainwashing continue. Because on all these posts that I made on Facebook about, you know, about the cops... And, and, and these incidences, hell, you know, they're saying, well, you should listen to the cops, listen to the cops. But some of these people who are saying that, they are voluntarily surrendering. They are voluntarily surrendering their rights to the laws that are supposed to protect them from a corrupt government. They're sitting there saying, well, I mean, yeah, when your life is in jeopardy, of course you better listen. But your life is not fucking supposed to be in jeopardy. Okay, so anyway, I'm going to end this because, um, hey, here comes uh, Trump and Hillary, two biggest idiots on the face of the fucking planet. But uh, I'm at 22 minutes. Anyway, that's my little rant. Please leave a comment. Check us out on uh, Facebook, Socratic Method. Um, I go by St. Kirill. You know, you'll, uh, you'll see my connection there. It's my nom de plume. But anyway... Um, leave a comment, you know, if I said something controversial that you don't like, please let me know. I love to argue. <laughs> anyway, um, as I said, uh, St. Kirill, and, uh, like I said, just go check us out, man. <laughs>